I want to start off with my uh, elevator pitch. I don't see that there's a huge connection between acoustics and sustainable buildings. So my entire talk today is really about showing that link. I then want to do a simple demonstration of showing how if we improve the acoustic performance of windows, we have a dramatic impact upon our energy usage in buildings. So I, as most of us, want to live a sustainable life. I want to have an impact on the amount of carbon the country uses. How do I do that? Well, I could go out and buy an electric car. The problem with an electric car is that uh, it may be more energy efficient, but it's then got lithium batteries and I seem to get criticized for, uh, for buying a car of that nature. So what I then do is I think, right, let's keep things simple. I take my bike, I cycle to work, I recycle my waste at home. Those must be sustainable things to do. The problem with that is that I'm one individual. If I'm gonna have an impact upon the country's carbon footprint, I need to affect all of us. So how do I do that? Well, the simple way is to look at my job. My job is acoustic consultant. If I was energy guru, energy consultant, energy management, something or other, I would have a much greater chance of influencing the amount of energy that we use. So I'm stuck with the job title acoustic consultant. What do I do about that? So if you think about a really simple principle, if we didn't have ears, what would that mean to the amount of energy our building use? So if we didn't have ears, we wouldn't necessarily need super thick walls between our houses. We could just have paper thin walls. Uh, if we didn't have ears, we could uh, remove the thickness of slabs between buildings, uh, schools and so forth. And what we could do is lighten up the structure of buildings significantly. And that would have a major impact upon the embodied energy in a building. However, that isn't a vast amount of energy. What is significant is the amount of energy we use in the ventilation system. More than 50% of the energy usage in buildings is within the ventilation system. And in terms of ventilating build buildings efficiently, we have really two main methods. We have the first method, which is called heat recovery. What we do is we seal up the building, so we shut the windows, and we recirculate the air around that building. What that does is it maintains the heat within the building, so that's a very efficient way of ventilating buildings in the winter time. We only allow the right amount of air in, and then we push the air around the building. The problem with that is that we have lots of ducts. Those ducts consume energy, and then it becomes hard. So what we do is we open up holes like this atrium, uh, holes in the slab, and so forth, drive the air around these large holes, much more energy efficient. The problem with that is then we also transfer noise from one space to another space. What I really want to talk about is how we ventilate buildings in the summertime. And the way that we keep the energy consumption down in the summertime is to cool the building by means of opening windows. The problem with opening windows is that if we have windows, the noise comes into a building. We've all slept in hotels and thought, it's pretty warm in here, I'll open the window. 10 minutes later, you're back out of bed, shutting the window because it's too noisy. The problem with windows is they don't stop sound. And if we look at the acoustic performance of the windows, what we find is that their performance is between 10 and 15 dBs. That figure was set back in the 1970s. So since the 1970s, we haven't been able to figure out how do we improve the performance of an open window. I now want to look at the importance of getting the figure right for an open window. So if we look at this, this is a noise map. So basically, the, uh, this is a motorway. So you can see there's a high density of color at about 65 decibels. And these might be parks and cities, which are nice and quiet. So if we take a classroom, for example, a classroom has a requirement that it shouldn't exceed 35 decibels background noise. So if we add 10 dBs to that, we get 45 and 50. So that means that we can't naturally ventilate any of these sites because this is still at 55. We can naturally ventilate here. But that's using the upper level. As a designer, do I use the upper level or the lower level? If I have the lower level, I have almost no sites available to me. And if I manage to enhance the performance of a window to 20 decibels, I start to get many more sites available to me for natural ventilation. So why is it that we haven't managed to understand the acoustic performance of the windows? And one of the reasons for that is the acoustics is really difficult. The next problem is, is when you have something that's really difficult and you have to convince other people to change something, like an architect, they have to understand it. So I came up with a simple concept that if we could visualize sound going through a window, not only could we understand why a window performs the way it performs, but we can also convince other people. So I came along to my friend, the Slinky. The Slinky is a great tool. What I can do with the Slinky is I can put an impulse in it, 
and I can see a wave traveling along it. That's all good and well. It doesn't really demonstrate how sound goes through a window. But I can put an object in the way. And if I put an object in the way, what I see is that that object will reflect the energy coming back. So this very simple model using three slinkies demonstrates how sound performs. The problem is that I can't get a thousand slinkies to demonstrate how a whole building performs and show an architect that. So we came up with a simple principle of can we mathematically model that. So what we've done is we've looked at the top of the slinky, placed a series of dots, taken those dots, and added a series of differential equations between them. One slinky isn't particularly good, so we've added a few more. And from there, we can then model exactly the same propagation. Placing an object in the way, we get the same scenario. So our next step has been to take this. And the problem that we have is this is only a one-dimensional uh, movement. So all the dots just follow each other dot. So the obvious step to do is to add more differential equations between each of the dots. And what that has now allowed us to do is to create a much more realistic uh, model of how sound propagates. And as we see here, we see the wave propagating away from the sound source. It's round, which is what we would expect. And we can now see how it reflects off a structure. And more importantly, diffracts around the structure. This is where the complex maths comes in. It's how does sound bend around an object. If you can't see my mouth, you can still hear it. And the reason for that is that sound is bending around my hand. So we can then take this technology and start to study the difference between a sash window and other types of windows. So that's the propagating wave. You can now see it reflecting off the structure. And you can see it coming through the opening and radiating into the room. That's fairly simple, and it's more or less what you would expect. It's a simple hole. What comes out the other side is, is round and spherical, and that's more or less what you would expect. If you now take a top-hung window, we can see the difference. As you can see here, the sound is diffracting around the window, coming in. It's reflecting off the facade at the bottom, and that is traveling back up hits the window and re-travels in. So now we have more than one wave coming into the building and a second wave coming down. So if we know now, we know that if we treat those areas, we can start to control the amount of sound that comes into a building. And we can compare the two. Just simply the difference between a sash window on the left-hand side and a top-hung window on the right-hand side, you can see there's a lot more energy in this zone than there is in this zone. So if you want to reduce noise levels, use a top-hung window. It's also pretty obvious that if the sound is further round, it's going to let in less sound. So if you angle your window away from the sound source, that is also going to have a benefit. And that will start to bring us up to about 20 decibels of sound reduction. But we wanted to go further. So what we've done is we've just used our brains, blocked the line of sight through the window in this instance. So what we've done here is this element here is an extension to the conventional window. So the sound now can't really see into the window and that has a significant benefit upon the performance. So here we have a motorway. <laughs> and once the little extension has gone past, the noise levels have gone up dramatically. We can take the next simple principle. which is just to put a short panel in front of the window that deflects the sound away from the window and significantly enhances the performance of the window. And what this means is that we can now start to boost the performance of windows. Firstly, we can live more comfortably in buildings that are in inner cities and we can open our windows without cooling. And we can take schools and offices and many other buildings and reduce the amount of mechanical ventilation you need simply by adapting and adjusting the windows. Hopefully, that's going to have a major impact upon the energy usage of our buildings. And that's it. Thank you.